talk about your friendship that you've formed over the years. We've built a great relationship between us and this organization and the women, so they trust us so much. Long before Fartuna's mail arrived in snowy Minnesota, her family was forced to flee from war-torn Somalia and live in refugee camps. Talk about kind of your beginning and, and your life in the refugee camp. It was a struggle. By living there, it was seeing my mother's struggles, you know, She's a breadwinner of my family, and looking at her, it was something that uh, heartbreaking for me. I had a full bag of clothes and a dream of making my family and my relative, you know, uh, to live a better life and trying to help others to live a better life. How old were you when you moved here to the United States? I was uh, 15 years old when I came to the U.S. And why here? Why Minnesota? Minnesota is a home of a lot of immigrants. People have been talked about, said, oh, Minnesota is a good place to live. And I had a relative too. So since I had a relative here, I decided to come here. Minnesota now has one of the largest populations of Somali refugees in the United States, yeah. with an estimated population here of 80,000 people. To help provide employment opportunities to Somali women, Fartoon decided to launch a program that would teach them to sew. You've got a thriving group back here. I mean, just the energy, the humming of the machines. What is it like to bring so many people together? They are passionate about this, so that's why they're here. They want to be integrated and be part of the way the world is going. And what do you say to people who say sewing is old-fashioned? If they say it is old thread, obviously, I need a clothes to wear every single day. And I'm not going to depend on another third country. I can do something from here and create that for myself. I love that, that entrepreneurial ambition to create locally sourced clothing, closing that gender gap in the world of tailoring. Yes. In Somalia, it's mostly men who are tailors. Fartoon and her friends are trying to change that here in America. We also have a woman that are from our class that graduated and she's making money out of it. She has a store and she's doing that tailoring and she's so proud. And as Fartoon's organization grew, she knew she had to reach out for more volunteers. You made a post on the online community site next door and, and mothers from around the community, both in Somali community and beyond, said, we want to help, we want to volunteer and, and be part of this. Yes. And now there's a huge group of women who come here every week, every Tuesday, to, to be part of this community. How many women does it take to thread a machine? The world will never know. Well, I have a personal mission statement to only use next door for good. <laughs> and that's not to say I don't lurk and read the other comments, but I use it only for good. And when this opportunity came along, it was just a really easy way for me to become involved as opposed to Facebook or some of the bigger um, social media outlets where I don't feel like I connected to the community. So Nextdoor was a great way for me to feel like I was helping my immediate neighborhood. This is really a story about neighbors coming together. Years ago I realized that I was surrounded by Somali people that I read about in the newspaper and I'd see when I was shopping, um, but I knew nothing about them. So when the opportunity came up to volunteer as a sewing teacher or a sewing assistant, I jumped at the chance just to learn a little bit more about the community. And quite honestly, I didn't know if I could do it because I didn't know the language. I didn't know the sewing machines they were using. I didn't really know anything about the culture. I felt like everything I was saying was wrong. Can I take All right. this off? Yes, yeah. you can take it off, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think it's important to try to make those connections with other cultures? Well, for me, it's important because I realize there's a lot of talk now of people being in their silos and their bubbles, and I looked around and realized that, indeed, that's where I was. Leslie is one of you know the best um, teachers that they love and they enjoy working with her. The goal is for them to be successful at the end of the day making some kind of income for their family. There are a lot of groups in America that respond to immigrant communities with fear. How do you respond to that? Quite honestly, I do sometimes too. Um, but I realize that it's mostly fear of the unknown. And all you have to do is say hello and look somebody in the eye and suddenly the world is small. Well, Leslie, when you do this fold, the By becoming involved with this community, I realize how small my world had become and now I'm inching my way to making it a little bit bigger.